Okay, so today I want to talk about building a basic node server, but adding in some routing for your requests. Now this is building routing with bare bones, no JS, no Express, no other libraries. Um, so I'm starting off with the same file. If you want a copy of this starter code, um, the link to that is down in the description. And we're bringing in here, same as always, the HTTP and URL modules from, from Node.js. We're calling the create server method on the HTTP object, and that's the thing that's going to create our, our server. So if I close that down, you can see there's not a lot to this. We've got these modules being brought in. We're creating our server. We're telling the server to listen. I just randomly picked port 1234. So when I run this, it's going to be listening. We say node and server route.js. There we go. It's listening on port 1234. So this is running. This server is running. Now I've split my terminal here using VS Code. I've got this great little thing. I can have two terminal windows up side by side. So this is my client. This is my server. Now for creating routing, we've got the basic server. We're listening. And then we really just need to add this routes object. Now it doesn't have to be called routes, but it's a variable name that makes sense. Um, we can use const in here. That's probably a better choice. That way we're not going to accidentally be able to uh, replace routes with something else somewhere else in our code or somebody else can't replace routes in, in our code. Um, I've defined four different routes. So Kenny, Cartman, Kenny is Mysterion, and not found. And what we're going to be doing basically is looking for these paths. Now these ones can have quotation marks around them as well. Um, VS Code, my extensions just automatically wrap that. It stripped off the quotation marks because they weren't needed around here. But if we wanted to have a different path, we could do this and say, okay, Cartman, um, let me close that, Cartman slash something else. So what we're doing is we're building different paths to respond. This page is taking all the incoming requests. It's listening for everything. And then we are going to look for a match in here. When we find a match, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put this back to Cartman. So if I come over here and I say curl HTTP localhost and port 1234 was the one we were using. And then I'm going to look for Kenny. And this is going to send the response. And this route here is actually going to be sending back this payload. So I've got something very similar in all four of these. I've defined a variable called payload, which is some JSON data. I've stringified it. I've set a couple of headers. I've written a 200 code as sending all these headers. And then I'm just writing out that string. And I'm throwing a new line character on here just to make it easier to read in here for myself. So it jumps down to the next line before it writes out the next line in the terminal. But that's really all that I'm doing here. Inside each one of these routes, when I call these functions, I'm passing in two things. One is data. This data variable is really just reflective of, it's the information about the request. So the headers, the method, uh, any data that was sent in with the request, uh, the URL, all the bits and pieces of the request, I'm going to send in here because, I mean, let's face it, this is a very basic <laughs> sample that we're sending back very little information. But if you were actually building routes to do different things, you would want to have access to what the request was. Yes, this is the function that is specific to the request, but it's a good idea to be standardized in how you're doing this and always send in the information about the request. So if you need it, you have it. And then res, this is the response object. We need the response object to do this, and that's because routes is outside the scope of our function up here, where res was actually being created. So we're passing it from inside of here down into our, our routes Kenny function. Same thing for the other ones. Cartman, almost the exact same. So if I did a, a request here and I said Cartman was the route, there we have it. Um, same thing here for this one. I just made a bigger payload, some more information to come back. Uh, and then not found, this is the one that's going to run whenever we send in a path that isn't recognized. 
So it's got to come to the server. We still have to put localhost 1234, but then anything else, something that is not going to be recognized, you know, it could be multiple parts of the path, doesn't matter. There we go. This is the payload that's coming back. This string, this JSON object that has been stringified right there. But the rest of this code is the exact same in all of them. The way we send it back from the route is going to be the same. It's just, it's really a question of what are you doing differently in this part right here? So are you doing something with the data? What is the data that you're sending back? Those are the routes. They're just functions that you call based on the URL. So how do we get to that point? Well, let's jump into the server object right here. We're creating the server. We are taking the URL. This is the same as in my request video. I'm taking the request object that's sent to me. I'm getting its URL parameter and I'm parsing that. I've said true for the second parameter because I want the query string as well. So this right here is going to return to me two things. I've got this parsed URL object and it's going to have two parts, the path name and query. Path name, that would be what we have down here. So slash and then the name slash slash, all those different bits and pieces. But people can send it in different ways. Um, you can end up with, oh, well, you'll always have the slash at the beginning, but you can end up with uh, a slash at the end sometimes, and other times you don't have it. So to be sure that we're getting the right thing to standardize it, because JavaScript is going to be case sensitive, and it will care if we're looking at a string, whether or not there's a slash there. So I'm going to remove the slashes from either side. And that's what we're doing on this line right here, just using a regular expression. And we're going to say, okay, if it starts with, and then we have to escape. So this is the backslash character right here. So starting with one or more slashes, or it has one or more slashes at the end, either one. So this is the or operator in the middle. So if it's got slashes at the beginning or slashes at the end, replace them with an empty string. So just removing those slashes at the start and at the end. I've got a console log here, just so I can see what's being sent in. There's Kenny without the slashes. Here's Cartman without the slashes. And here's that last one that we did. And you'll see that there was a slash at the end, but it's been removed. So we did get rid of that. The, other, the next few lines here, this is just going to be that data variable that we're passing into our routes. So I'm I've got the query string, I've got the headers from the request, I've got the method converted to lowercase, so if it's patch or delete or put or post or get, whatever the method is, I'm taking that as well. And this is what is going to comprise my data object that I send to my routing function. Here's the information. Here's the path, here's the query string, here's the headers, here's the method. I'm not dealing with reading the incoming data, but you can add that as well from the previous video. Now there's two event listeners. We're still inside of this create server function. We're looking at the request object and it has two, there's a, a listener called on and we're listening for the end event or the data event. Now, if you're going to use the end, you have to have the data. Even if you're not receiving any data whatsoever, if you don't have this event listener, this one won't fire. So right here, I'm writing out got some data. I'm never going to see that here because I'm not actually sending any data from uh, the client over to the server. So I never see that message in my example here. If you were posting some data, you would see that message. I'm not using the data, but I do still need to have that so that this one will fire. Now inside of here, send a response. That message you are seeing. So I'm getting inside of this end listener. This is firing every single time I make a request. We've got our request, it's done, and then here's the routing part. I'm looking to see if path, which is what we defined up here, so we took the path, we stripped off the slashes, so something like this becomes something like this. So I'm taking that string, and I'm looking to see, hey, inside of the routes object, that's the thing that we defined down here at the bottom, inside this routes object, is there something called whatever the path is? As long as that is not undefined, that's the function I'm going to run. So I'm going to take that function. So let's say this is Kenny. So routes Kenny, 
That's a function. Routes Cartman was a function. I'm going to take that function and I'm going to assign it to route. If it is undefined, that means I don't have it defined. Because somebody is not going to send a URL and say, not found. I mean, this would work if we did that. If I went HTTP colon slash slash localhost one, two, three, four slash, and then I used not found the way it's written here. It gave me back this, but it gave it to me for a different reason. It gave it to me because back up in here in the end listener, it did exist. We didn't get undefined. So it's going to say, yeah, the one that's called not found, send that back. But nobody's ever going to be typing this. And if they do, well, they're going to get not found, which would make sense. So this is the one that gets sent back if it doesn't exist inside of our routes object. All right, so we've got our function defined. We know which one of the functions to call. Here's that data object that we're going to send over. We've got the path, we've got the query string, we've got the headers, we've got the method. And if there was some data that we wanted to send along, you know, we could do that. Maybe we had a, a payload defined up inside of here. We were building up a buffer string and we want to send that along. So we can do that. We can take the data, bundle it up together, and, you know, maybe it's called buffer. And that's all the contents of what was coming back to us. So whatever you want to call it. We have that bundled up together. We know the function that we want to call. Here's the data that we're going to call. And so we just call it. We call the function that we defined up here as route, pass in the data, and we pass in the response object. We have to pass in the response object because down here, where we're using it, we're out of the scope. So this is going to be getting us this one right here, the response object that was created for this function and passed into this function. So inside of here, I have the request or the response object rather. But as soon as I jump into this other object, this no longer exists. I couldn't just refer to uh, the response object here. I have to pass it into these functions to make this work. So by passing this in here, close that. <laughs> by passing it into here, we're able to set the header, write the header, write and end. So we're sending the data back. And that's it. That is how you route a request using Node.js without any additional libraries. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Uh, again, that sample code is linked to down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.